Valerie. I was carefully preparing for my high school reunion, taking care to make sure my spouse wouldn't find anything suspicious. I had no intention of being intimate with my ex, especially not with Randall Briggs. My main goal was to take advantage of this unique opportunity to reconcile with close friends who were spread out across the nation. However, there was a hidden ulterior motive that persisted. I wanted to show Randall the new me and demolish his perception of me as a young woman who was easily influenced. Even if I wasn't completely inexperienced at the time, his boast about conquering me nevertheless hurt. My head was filled with plans for revenge, but within the law. I questioned, hoping for confirmation. Simon, are you sure you can't join me? Many attendees were your friends too. I wish I could, but there's a critical loan negotiation. I need to be here, he said. Are you worried about Randall and me? I asked. It's more about him. He had a way with girls, and that hasn't likely changed. Just do us both a favor. Stay clear, warned him. If you ask me not to go, I won't. But I hope you trust me. You're my only love, and I won't betray us, I said. Simon noted the importance of the reunion, saying, Val, this is a chance to see your old crew. He might not even attend. Although I had conflicting feelings upon seeing Simon again, I was steadfast in my commitment to him. Simon, watching her go hurt because I was furious at the idea of her getting back together with Randall. Not until Val and I were engaged did I find myself uninvited, celebrating with my male friends in a pub with him. Everything was going okay until he cornered me. Simon, you're one lucky guy. Valerie was the best I ever had. I was her top lover, and that won't change, he grumbled. Sure, I didn't take her virginity, but I was her first in other ways. She had quite the time that night. I bet you give her some satisfaction, but she'll always remember me as the best. I cracked up. I swung my hand and lunged at him, but he easily blocked me. Randall was forced to leave by friends who interfered. His final comment that he could have her whenever he wanted hurt. Again, I needed to be restrained. Valerie and I never spoke about that incident. I didn't want her to think of Randall at all. Her history of treating women badly by him seemed to contradict her assertions that she hated him for what he'd done. He was charming, smart, charming beyond belief, and clearly good in bed. Women were drawn to him with apparent ease. Though I didn't want to upset her, I wanted to warn her against anything I wouldn't do. I'll miss you, Val. Have a great time, and remember I love you. I needed to have faith in her. Her comforting words, I love you too. Simon, get ready for my attack when I'm back. Help to ease the anxiety. Valerie, I noticed a placard in the luggage area marking our 10th anniversary reunion as soon as I got off the plane. Married classmates who maintained a nearby motel had set aside a special price for all attendees. It turned out that the man with the placard was the driver of the hotel van and I went up to him. He said that I should wait for others on the next flight, and I did, happy to see Beverly among the people who had arrived. We continued catching up until we checked out of the hotel and went to our separate rooms. In one of the hotel's meeting rooms, there was an open bar reception to start off the reunion. Beverly and I made quick friends with a few other people who had come in earlier. It became a game to figure out who these folks were, a spouse, a student, or a party guest. It was fun, but I couldn't let go of my anxiety. Every now and then I would glance around the room wanting to face Randall head on and be done with it. However, he never did. I was too nervous to ask if he had registered, so I didn't want to come out as interested in seeing him. The local country club was the venue for a variety of outdoor events on Saturday. Individuals were dispersed enjoying tennis, swimming golf, and tanning while sipping beverages. When I wasn't buried in old school memories with my pals from high school, I was looking for any indication that Randall was about. Part of me was disappointed that he hadn't materialized yet, even though I craned my neck to look about. The main event took place on Saturday night, which included dinner and a dance in the hotel ballroom. I looked at myself in the mirror in my room, trying to strike a balance between classy and seductive. I was described as having an attention, grabbing face and figure by people rather frequently. 
I wore a bra that accentuated my bust to highlight my shape, which was still quite close to my weight from high school. My short, wavy, dark hair seemed to be approved of, and my clothing guaranteed that people would look twice. As long as it kept at glances and not touches, I've always drawn attention, and tonight definitely wouldn't be any different. Beverly and three of our friends were sitting at a table with another couple. One of them not from our typical group of friends, but a student. Over dinner, we didn't talk to them much. There were fewer people on the dance floor after the meal ended, and a band started playing nostalgic music. Talking and drinking became the main events. A few drinks later, an elderly male acquaintance asked me to dance. His wife, who was also a friend, wasn't into dancing, so I agreed with her approval. Randall Briggs made his spectacular debut in the middle of a dance. Oh no, I completely forgot how handsome he looked. The recognizable lock of hair that cascades over his forehead continues to captivate. It's said that the simple motion of his hair may send people into a state of pleasure. He appeared to be in excellent shape, maybe even more athletic than when he competed in swimming in high school. Thousands of girls would go crazy for Randall's body at swim meets, especially when he was wearing those tight swim trunks. The contours of his body caused sighs to be heard when he emerged from the water. Even though I despised him, my heart skipped a beat when I saw him. Randall welcomed people slowly, a confident aura replacing the haughty vibe of our high school days. He exuded confidence and was surprisingly courteous. Back at the table, Beverly said, Goodness, Randall is even more appealing now. I wonder how quickly he'll charm a woman tonight. And why do I find myself wanting to be one of those he chooses? Uh, Beverly, you're married. What's gotten into you? Nothing that a good fling wouldn't fix. I adore Hank, but I'm craving a one-night revival. Heck, I'm getting excited just thinking about Randall. Come on, don't tell me you're not feeling it too. After all, you got a taste of him once before. I gave her a startled expression while grudgingly admitting to being slightly aroused. Bever, I had my fill of him when I was foolishly young. I have the most wonderful husband now, and I won't jeopardize that for a self-absorbed Casanova. Valerie, come on. You know your status skyrocketed after he boasted about you too. Many girls wished they had the chance. Some are here tonight still hoping he'll pick them. Well, count me out. I have a speech prepared for Mr. Lothario that'll make my stance crystal clear. Randall kept mixing, mostly with the women, as the night went on. There was occasionally laughter. Other times women left looking obviously disgusted, and some even made their availability known. Randall moved through the room with calm composure. Then our gazes locked. I thought to myself, damn it, he caught me looking at him. Oh no, not that smile. That's the smile that lured me into letting him cross boundaries. Buck up, girl. He's heading over. Valerie, may I have the honor of this dance? He sensed my reluctance. I promise to behave. Please? I went to the dance floor with him reluctantly and we had a slow dance. I was sure that my offensive was ready and my defenses were in place. Perhaps a little too sure. Remarkably, he remained politely far, making no move to get nearer or put his hand any lower down my back. His unceasing smile deceived me, and before long, I was grinning too. He said, You're so beautiful when you smile, and I was surprised by how sincere his statement was. I scowled, expecting a standard response. He became aware. I guess I should get right to it. Val, you're the main reason I'm here tonight. I want to apologize for how I treated you in high school. There's no excuse for my awful behavior. I'd have to make immense changes just to crawl out from being the scum of the earth. You gave me the greatest gift, and I betrayed that by boasting. It's hard to face what a despicable person I've been. I'm hoping for your forgiveness, but I'd settle for you not hating me anymore. My prepared speech vanished from my mind as I was left in shock. He went on. I can't take credit for becoming a better person. It took a remarkable woman to set me straight. Once I met her, I wanted to do right by her. Compliments were genuine, not a means to an end. I felt lucky just to have her tolerate me. 
Though she never said a word against me, she made me confront my actions. She made me cry over my past misdeeds. Thanks to her and Aya, I've been sober for 17 months and three days. When I left rehab, I was broken. She rebuilt me. I slowly became a new man with a new purpose. I owe her my life. Randall, she sounds incredible. Where is she tonight? Melody is back home. We debated whether it was best for her to come. When we discussed my need to apologize to you and others, she thought it might be best for her to stay. It would hurt her to see if some women were still angry with me. Also, I wasn't sure if I'd have the courage if she was watching. It crushed me to disappoint her. You might have noticed my attempts to apologize tonight. Some went well, others didn't. I don't blame those holding grudges. I'm just disappointed I couldn't do more to ease their hatred. His eyes filled with tears. I waited before coming to you. I've always felt you're the one I owed the most to apologize. Simon's a lucky man. If I could have designed the perfect woman physically and emotionally, she'd look like you. Now, I've found someone else. Melody's not like you in many ways, but she's perfect in others. I won't mess this up. His embrace was more about finding solace than romance. He gave me a quick peck on the cheek as the dance came to a close, and then continued to converse with other people. Beverly walked back to the table and said, You really gave him a piece of your mind? I was ready to, but he spent the time apologizing for how he treated me. Seems like he has a wife who's turned his life around. Val, I heard his wife is stunning, but often in a wheelchair due to amps. Still works part-time and does charity work when she can. Rumor has it, she can't feel it anymore if they have sex. Irony, huh? The school's biggest player stuck with a woman who can't feel a thing. Beverly, sometimes you disgust me. Remind me why we're friends. We laughed together and said, because we know too many secrets about each other. Thanks to Randall's apology, as the evening wore on and the drinks began to take their impact, I felt obliged to say, I asked him to dance when the next slow song started playing. He concurred. Squeezing him tighter, I spoke above the tunes. I wanted you to know I appreciate your apology. I'm glad you've turned things around. I always thought you had the potential for good. Please give my best to your wife. She sounds amazing. It must be tough for you. In an instant, Randall's demeanor turned ferocious. I know what you're thinking. She's amazing for someone disabled. Spare me your sanctimonious pity, Valerie. My wife does incredible things for anyone, regardless of their abilities. It's an honor for me to be with her. She doesn't want your pity, and neither do I, by extension. Valerie, I thought you were better than this. Suddenly, I don't feel like dancing with you anymore. Randall made his way to the exit. I quickly grabbed my handbag and followed him. He was sitting on a concrete bench outside with tears running down his cheeks. I sat next to him and put my arm around his shoulders, saying, Randall, I'm sorry. I didn't mean any disrespect. I meant that I'm glad you two have each other. Please forgive me. He put his head on my shoulder in an attempt to feel better. It took him a few moments to gather himself. Val, I'm sorry I snapped. It gets to me sometimes. I had so much to give, but I used it for the wrong reasons for so long. I don't deserve her. You know, she even encouraged me to find someone tonight since she can't. You know, who does something so selfless? I really, really don't deserve her. I'm sorry, I need to get back to my room and drown my sorrows. I sympathized with him and promised to help. I stopped him before he could get to the bar. You don't need alcohol. How about coffee? I don't want people seeing me like this. Can we go somewhere private? I was instantly hesitant to go to his room when he said, We both have coffee in our rooms. I knew it was dangerous, but I felt like I could handle things better there, so I said, Let's go to mine, in case. He took a seat in my room while I was making the coffee. Do you have a photo of your wife in your wallet? I said, passing him a cup, and he handed me a lovely photo of a lady in a wheelchair. 
Randall sobbed once again and hurried to my restroom. He looked so lost and defenseless when he finally calmed himself to come back to me. I was compelled to give him a hug. Val, do you still hate me? No, Randall. I don't hate you. And I forgive you. Really? Can you do me a favor then? What do you need? Dance with me once more, like you care for me. I miss dancing with the person I care about the most. We pressed against each other, dancing to numerous songs, and the radio was tuned to the oldies channel. His perfume hovered around me. My emotional walls began to crumble. His warm breath touched my neck as his face moved closer to mine. My knees trembled but didn't buckle. Then, as a reminder that he was familiar with my erogenous zones, his lips began to explore my earlobes. It felt really good and reminded me of that long-ago night. I could physically feel my body responding. Our tongues connected when his lips touched mine. I was barely aware that my dress was coming down when his hands started to explore my body, and he started kissing the tops of my breasts. I was about to respond as he started to undo my bra when it dawned on me. Oh my God, not again! I shoved him away, and the endearing smile gave way to a scowl I hated. Come on, Val. You know you want this. I won't tell Simon this time. How many people get the chance for a second round of the best sex in their life? I was so mad at myself and at him. He reached for me and said, Get out! Abused. Abused. I exclaimed, running to my handbag to get my pink pepper spray and pointing it in his face. With a disgusted expression on his face, he headed for the door and said, You. Fine. I'm leaving. Randall made one last snarky remark before heading out, saying, When you change your mind, give me a call. I noticed how conceited he was to use the word when, rather than if. Get out. I fell into the bed with tears flowing down my cheeks as soon as he was gone. After a cathartic weep, a fresh viewpoint emerged. How could I almost fall for his trick again? What's wrong with me? A feeling of pride crept in. I almost gave in, but I didn't. I stood by my husband and my marriage. It was too late to notify Simon that I had passed the loyalty test when I intended to call him. Now a call could worry him. I'll talk about how I really feel when I go home tomorrow. Simon. Being at work on this unique Sunday morning made me feel strangely optimistic. Especially as the senior loan officer at First National Bank. We just needed the updated documents signed by all parties so that the out-of-town delegation could board their aircraft home, and the huge commercial loan deal was almost finished. I took a moment to check my emails, which I hadn't done in the previous few days. I happened to glance at an unexpected email, and it was from none other than Randall Briggs. The subject line was, I told you so. Even though I was feeling queasy, I couldn't resist opening it. It said, I told you so, within. Since our first dance, she has been eager. It's hard to refuse the master, so don't hold it against her too much. See the attachments I took from her hotel room in case you think I'm bluffing. There were four clickable picture attachments. My wife was in her underwear when I clicked on the first one, almost losing my breakfast in the process. The others said much the same thing. My desire was to destroy my sea. A postscript with a link to this website read, If you choose to remove these pictures, you can view them and others at... I made a note of the address and put it away in my wallet. I'd check it later when I get home. I had to sign as professionally as I could for the time being. I left the post-signing festivities and went back home. Tears that had been suppressed until then burst out. I had never been more angry. It hurt as much, if not more to see her turn on me and betray him than it did to see her with him. It was a lie for her to say she could manage him. Without a doubt, the marriage was destroyed by that degree of deception. When I got home, I made a heavy drink for myself and went to a motel. I started laying out how we were going to dissolve the marriage on Monday there. Valerie. I virtually ran up the steps to my house toward the end of Sunday afternoon, carrying my suitcase with me. I imagined the scene. Me jumping into my husband's arms and telling him all about my victory. I said excitedly, Simon, but got no answer. 
He's got to be still invested in that financing arrangement. The party would have to wait, I guess. Something drew my attention in the kitchen as I was moving through the dining room with my bag, making my way toward the bedrooms and the stairs. It was a photo of me in my undies with Simon's engagement ring on it. After that, everything turned dark. I looked at the picture in shock as I awoke. I was in the hotel room that I had just departed from. The picture was taken late last night, right after I'd ejected Randall. I knew it was the dress I'd left on the bed. Then it dawned on me. The tale of the female sports writer who was followed and photographed via a peephole. That, but I never undressed while he was there. How did he get these pictures? That bastard. I'll kill him. But first I need to explain to Simon. Uh, phone no longer in service message appeared when I tried to call my husband's cell phone. I looked for Simon and called everyone I could think of, including his parents, but nobody had seen or heard from him. I looked into every hotel in the area, but he wasn't listed there either. With more than 50 motels in the next city, I gave up. When I contacted his bank the next day, I discovered that Simon had taken a few days off after working all weekend to close the major deal. His secretary thanked him for his work and thought we had been taken on a joyous vacation. She appeared perplexed by the circumstances. I was too, but I thought I suspected something. I was desperate to confide in someone after days without hearing from Simon. I was unable to contact our acquaintances in the area, though, in case they heard about our marital problems. Instead, I gave Beverly a call. Hey there, girlfriend, Beverly said with a sigh. What's going on? I told Beverly what had happened and said, Beverly, I need your help. She surprised me with her remark. I had thought there would be at least a tinge of sympathy. You want my help? You must be kidding. You foolish idiot! I owe you for the best night I ever had. What on earth are you talking about? Randall and I orchestrated the whole thing. That story about him begging your forgiveness and having a disabled wife unable to have sex. It was all fake. I was supposed to finally get a night with Randall for my part. Even though he didn't get to you, he was so furious with you that he kept me up all night. I was so sore I couldn't hide it. Hank saw and figured out what I'd done. He left me. Good riddance. It was worth it. Now leave me alone to celebrate. It was astounding to me how many tears I still had. Many of them. Beverly had always seemed like a friend to me. I had no idea how jealous she was of Randall for paying attention to her while he neglected her. Unfortunately, I seemed to know far too many of the twisted folks that are out there. It had been almost two weeks, and Simon had not responded. I had not gotten divorce papers, at least. Then my cell phone rang with an unknown caller message. Usually, I would assume those were telemarketers and leave them on voicemail. However, I responded just in case. Simon was the one. Hello, Valerie. Oh, Simon, I'm so glad you called. I can explain everything. It's not what you think. Just give me a che. Please, have some dignity and spare me the typical cheater's false explanations. I hope you're not going to claim those pictures aren't of you. No, it's me, but I... Shut up, Valerie. I want you to know I've seen a divorce attorney. And he is drafted. No, Simon. Please, no divorce. Let me explain. I can fix this. You can fix it? I don't see how. Can you, un uh, take the photos? Can you let Randall go? Here's what. You fix it, then call me. But I don't have your new number. She begged, but nobody paid attention. There wasn't much time for me to mope around in my unhappiness. I was in for more problems. I got a website link from Simon. I saw 16 pictures of myself undressing when I clicked. Six of them showed me in my underwear. There had been more than a thousand views already. I was quite the sensation, apparently. I remembered reading about a comparable circumstance involving a female sports reporter. She talked about her experience, stating that she tried unsuccessfully to get her images taken down from these websites and that she even filed a lawsuit against the owner. She eventually came to the realization that once those photos were online, they would never go away. 
One piece of advice she was given was to sell her naked pictures while demand was high. Spreads were fetching handsome prices from magazines. No self-pitying lingo lasted. What was left was a craving for vengeance and rage. I had to retaliate. Finally, after a month of effort, I located this site's webmaster. Not that suing was going to stop him. I never consented to my picture being used. Take them down or I'll sue? He laughed. Honey, sue all you want. I have two lawyers on permanent retainer. It's amazing how many girls get drunk, sign papers, and forget what they agreed to do. My legal team's solid. I've lost very few suits. Have a nice day. I needed to think quickly. Wait. Wait. What if I trade you some sex pictures for information on those photos? What? What? Why would you trade sex pics for nudes? That makes no sense. I know getting the pictures back won't change anything. I'd do anything to get revenge on the person who sent them. I know who it is, but I need proof. A moment passed before I continued. You've seen how popular the nudes are. Imagine how popular actual sex scenes would be. I'll agree if I can record you having sex and post it. I knew what he would say. I agree if I choose the actor. Wait a minute, sweetheart. You don't get to call the shots here. I'm the producer. I pick the actors. Too bad, because setting up a website is simple. I might just do it myself. Someone sighed in frustration. All right, you win. Here's the name and address of the person who sent me the pictures. I was about to send him a check. He produced an affidavit from the webmaster a forged consent form signed by me, and the contact information for Randall Briggs. These came after I wrote a letter offering to have different sex acts filmed with actors of my choosing. I had originally thought that Simon would play the part and use the money to establish a family. I reasoned that he might wear a mask to conceal his identity, and my photos of him in his underwear were already public knowledge. With any luck, the money would seal the transaction and leave us with no one knowing who we were. I wrote a letter to Randall and consulted a lawyer. I gave Simon the rundown on the evidence against him and the danger of a lawsuit, but I also offered to put an end to it if he confessed on camera to Simon about what really transpired in the hotel room and at the dance. He would have to have faith that the footage would not be turned against him. A week later, the desired video was delivered. However, a lot had transpired since then. Instead of staying silent about our marriage, Simon had started to portray himself as the poor cuckold, hoping to win others over with his sympathy. A few women attempted consoling him, and some friends who had once believed me now took his side. What was meant to be a meeting with Randall ended up being a meeting with other males. Simon asserted to have evidence, along with a website link. His challenge to allow me to refute the notion that he was cheating was vanished. I was so enraged. Simon not only refused to give me an opportunity to clarify, but he also made me feel even more ashamed of my naked pictures. Friends trusted his malignancy more than they verified with me. I was furious. I abandoned my previous principles and came up with a new scheme. I emailed every friend, neighbor, family, and any person whose address I knew. The message was simple. Simon, you challenged me to disprove the connection between the nude photos and an affair. I have the evidence now. Since you chose to publicly accuse me without allowing me a chance to gather proof, I challenge you to meet in a conference room with our divorce attorneys present. If not, I'll proceed with a divorce and sue for slander. Sincerely, Valerie. Journalists crowded inside the conference room. Simon eventually consented to meet after some coercion from our buddies. Our attorneys coordinated the specifics. As our lawyer started, I was fuming and Simon looked sheepish. Let's see the proof that a nude woman couldn't have had sex with the man who took her picture. Turning my laptop around, I played Randall's video. The question isn't if I could have had sex because I could have. It's whether I did. I indicated that an expert thought the photos were taken through a peephole. Before he spoke, Simon conferred with his lawyer. You could have coerced him into making that video or offered more sex for lies. 
There's no proof Randall and I had sex. It didn't happen. Let's go to court. I have evidence the pictures came from outside my room. Simon assumes I slept with Randall, but will testify and take lie detector tests. I have witnesses for Simon's accusations against me, I said. Simon said to me, Val, it seems I owe you an apology, but you must understand why I thought following another consultation with his attorney. No, I don't understand why you'd conclude I had sex with Randall. Maybe suspect, but not jump to conclusions without letting me explain. Wouldn't that be the logical step if you trusted me? That's what I suspect a loving, trusting husband would do. What I've concluded is that my husband didn't truly love, trust, or respect me. Counselor, Randall Cummings, you've been served. Randall's attorney received the mail. Contact me when you're ready to sign. When Simon and his attorney saw the terms of the settlement, I don't think they were all that shocked. Simon would take only his original belongings and withdraw the slander complaint. We would divide the house's meager equity when we sold it. Absent therapy, not receiving alimony, absent assistance at home. Simple to understand. He could not afford to lose both his possessions and the case. By no means was I done getting my retribution, though. Prior to signing, Simon requested a word at the last signing session. Valerie, I'm sorry I didn't wait to talk to you about the pictures. I was scared that Randall would seduce you. The pictures made it too easy to believe my fears were true. As for divorce, I wanted to suggest counseling to save our marriage. Your lawyer shot it down, insisting on signing or going to court. Given the options, mine said this was probably the best deal and I risked losing everything. But I don't want to lose you, even if we divorce. Is there any way I can make things right? Can we stay together? Well, there is something. After we're divorced, would you join me in Las Vegas? My treat. Simon was perplexed by the query. I think I did. Starting fresh after the divorce. I might think it's a bit drastic, but I won't object. Why Las Vegas, though? Watch and absorb, I said with a knowing smile. Two weeks after the split, Simon and I took a quick trip to Las Vegas. I said firmly, there's time for that later to Simon's overtures at intimacy. Simon was perplexed by the double beds in our room, but obliged, not wanting to annoy me. Dinner was lighthearted and fun, much like our first date. Back in our room, I gave him a quick kiss before he looked about for more. I don't rush things on a first date, I said. Looked irritated, Simon withdrew to his own bed. His laborious attempts resounded from the lavatory. I told Simon this would not be forgotten the next day. I took him to a private location in Las Vegas, an adult film studio. He asked, What's the plan? You'll see. Hey, Hale, this is my ex-husband. Ready for us? Absolutely. Out stepped two hefty men who strapped Simon to a chair and used a gag to silence him from behind. I finally emerged naked from behind the screen after some time. Hello, Simon. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Suddenly, other males in various colors and forms showed up. Three other women were present. Wow, Hal. That's a great choice. It's going to be hard to choose. After considering every character in the entire series, I ultimately selected a lady, a black one, and a white one. I performed it in multiple positions with a black man at first. Next was a white man. At last, I examined a woman's complete body, and she did the same. It was enjoyable despite being different. This lasted for more than two hours in total, with multiple stops for mouthwash, water, and cleaning. Simon just sat there sobbing, taking in the whole sight. I approached him and said, Don't worry, honey. It's your turn now. Thanks to you, a lot of people think I'm a slut. Since I've already been labeled as such, I thought I might as well capitalize on it. Both a sedative and an increase in arousal were given to Simon. Two women and a man alternated in extracting four climaxes out of him over the course of several hours. Hal alerted Simon to the consequences as soon as he came to. Videos of the incident would spread. 
mirroring the humiliation Simon's wife had experienced when her pictures were shared online without permission. Hal gave Valerie a sizable check and pleaded with her to produce more movies. She responded, No, I'm a retired adult film star now. This money will get me a new start where no one knows me. Thanks anyway, Hal. You'll see that Simon gets back to his home? Absolutely. I've also handled the other issue. A few days later, a news article described the attack on Randall Briggs, which left him seriously hurt and probably never going to be able to urinate normally again. I promise he won't be able to.